Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Lansbury. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. What a, what a lovely, lovely greeting, and what a superb presentation. My goodness, I wish I could live up to all of those accolades. You know, it is really, truly a labor of love for me and a great honor to introduce one of the greatest animated films of all time. Beauty and the Beast was made by the Disney Studios during a period that came to be known as the golden years of animated film movies. Among them, of course, were The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, The Jungle Book, Tarzan, The Lion King, so many wonderful, wonderful titles, and so many great, great memories. But Beauty and the Beast was not only the first animated movie to be nominated for an Oscar, but one that succeeded in winning the Oscar, not only for the best score, but also for the best song, Beauty and the Beast. Well, that song is very, very dear to my heart, as you can possibly imagine. The first time that I heard the song, it came as a demo tape, I'm sure you know what that is, from the composers, Alan Menken and Howard Ashman. It was accompanied with a charming little note and the query, would I like to sing this song and, and play the character of the little teapot in this movie, Beauty and the Beast? I really didn't know too much about this movie. I mean, it was all new to me. But I said, oh, well, I'll listen to it. And I did. I listened to it very, very carefully. But I wasn't sure that I could really kind of do it justice. It wasn't kind of written in the style that I was used to, coming from Broadway. But they persisted and, and, and said, well, you, you just sing it as, as you would imagine this, this little person would sound. And then we'll, we'll decide on the basis of that. So I did just that. And I, I sent back my demo of the, of the song. And that was it. Mrs. Potts was born. You can imagine what a thrill it was for me to be hailed as a lovable little singing teapot <laughs> after years of playing some pretty despicable characters. I mean, children no longer hid behind their mother's skirts when I came around, and they approached me in the aisles of, of supermarkets, whispering, Mom, it's Mrs. Potts. You know, I was suddenly a heroine. Well, I can tell you, I'll never forget the thrill of, of, of recording the session in New York. We started off with Be Our Guest. You're going to see that later th tonight, and it's, it's so exciting and wonderful with the great Jerry Orbach doing his great Maurice Chevalier imitation as Lumiere, and David Ogden Stiers uh, as Cogsworth the Clock, who you will remember, accompanied by many members of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. I mean, this was the best. We were, we were doing this under the best possible circumstances. And Paige O'Hara was there, Belle, the lovely Belle, Robbie Benton, the beast with the great deep voice, and Richard White as Gaston, all singing superbly. And it was, it was the first time that we were really all together in the same place. And when it came time to record the title song, I suddenly felt so comfortable and, and at home. And I, I realized that all my experience in the musical theater came to the fore, and, and, and I managed to get it right on the first take. I was so relieved. Oh, my, you have no idea. You know, the interesting fact about putting together an animated feature is that in almost every instance, each character records his or her role by themselves. Seems strange, doesn't it? Because we're all chatting with one another in the movie. But in fact, we, we actually record our voices generally by ourselves. And the animation artists who are going to draw the characters watch us speaking our roles actually into a microphone, just as I am now. And they study our expressions and our bodily attitudes as we say our lines. Uh, sometimes they take photographs. 
if we let them. Um, mm -hmm. And from all of this information, they then draw their visual concept of the character, adding and subtracting as they fine tune each one. Now, this movie is hand-drawn and hand-colored animation, one of the very last. And, it, and it, it's absolutely at its best. James Baxter, Glenn Keane, Andreas Deja, and the dozens of superb artists and animators contributed to all the principal characters in this movie. I'm working, of course, under the supervision of the great Don Hahn, who was the producer, and the directors, Gary Truesdale and Kirk Wise, cheering everybody on and offering encouragement and enthusiasm throughout the process was Roy Disney. And that was a tremendous help, knowing that there was a member of the Disney family on board with us. We had a script that was really built like a Broadway musical, and that was by the great Linda Wolverton. I, I took my grandchildren to see the first performance of the movie at the El Capitan Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. And when I saw it, I, I thought it was just simply astonishing, and, and so did they. And this is one for the history books, I said at the time. And, this film will last, and has it ever. I mean, this is a story that begins with once upon a time and ends with happily ever after. So, I hope you're all going to enjoy this wonderful showing that you're going to see this evening. Thank you for coming, and thank the AFI and Target for making this evening possible. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>